for breakfast. I told y'all to clean that up. Oh, my. Oh, hello. I'm Jordan Kale, and you're watching Kale Scope. I'm originally from England, and I have lived in San Antonio for 17 years now, and I have made this my home. Some of the things that have kept me here are all the unlimited things to do and explore. San Antonio is a tourist city and has many things to do and explore for tourists and locals alike. We have theme parks such as SeaWorld, Fiesta Texas, and Nyosa. We can explore the Riverwalk and the Pearl and... Ian. Ian, what's, go what's going on? Rossi, what's going on? Ian, what the hell? Oh, 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 oh. What happened to your shirt? Oh, it got hot. Yeah, try having a hot flash in Spanx. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound pleasant. We can explore the river walk. Why the hell are there even pots and pans in the studio? It's for the cooking segment. Jordan, we're live. Keep going. Look, before I continue, I want to give a shout out to my mother. What? Jordan. Jordan, what are you doing? Jordan, where are you going? Jordan? Where are you going? Jordan? 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 Did you know that over 17 million shout outs are given out each day? but only about 19% of those are actually received. Nobody is ever taught how to do a shout out, therefore most shout outs are completely wasted and will be forever lost and never received. Well, that is unless somebody hears a recording of it, but by then it's old and stale and pretty much meaningless. Shout outs are like prayers and like prayers, nobody knows how to do it properly. Christians either fold their hands or point their fingertips to the thermosphere on their knees or sitting at a table. Muslims point the top of their heads to their best guess of where they think Mecca is, sometimes forgetting that the earth is round, so their prayers end up in the same thermosphere as the Christians. Hindus pray to their favorite gods using a shrine or a puja. The problem with praying, no matter how you do it, there's nobody on the receiving end. So unlike shoutouts, 100% of the 2.8 billion prayers are lost each day. But let's get back to the shout outs. Allow me to demonstrate how to properly shout out. <gasps> this time, I would like to introduce my co-host, Jean Carlos. Jean. J Jean? Jean Carlos. It's French. Jean. Oh, you mean me? Oh. Jean Carlos. Hey. <laughs> Jean. Yeah. Um, um, like me, you are also an outsider. Um, you came from a questionably different country yeah. and moved to San Antonio on your own. Um, tell us about yourself. Yeah, okay. So I grew up in Florida, but I'm from Puerto Rico. And I moved to San Antonio. First, my parents moved to San Antonio in 2008. And I would come and visit, and I'd be like, I don't know about this place. <laughs> and then what happened was is I fell in love with the culture in the city, when I started going downtown, I got involved in the music scene, I started experiencing all the cool stuff and the cool culture that exists in San Antonio. So that's when I decided to move here in 2012. Yeah. So earlier you were talking about tacos and how in Puerto Rico, tacos isn't really a thing. Could you tell us about that and how that was different when you came to San Antonio, please? Well, you know, like the, the part of Florida and in Puerto Rico, but the part of Florida that I grew up in, we had Mexican food, but it wasn't we didn't have as much of it. So I remember when I'd first visit here, or when I first moved here, trying to order food with uh, people I'd go on a date or I'd be out, and I'd be like, a fajita, like, <laughs> what is that? And I'd have to ask questions and just like relearn this whole language around food. 
uh, a food that I've really grown to fall in love with. Yeah. I see. Um, you know, I had some of those same problems too. You know, the traditional uh, white hiccups where you go quesadilla because you look at the two L's yeah, yeah. and you don't know things like that. Yeah. And um, it was a culture shock when I first moved here. I um, was fresher from England at the time, so I had a heavier accent. I had to learn how to say water instead of water and uh, <laughs> water. You know, and it was water. So it, it was definitely a learning process. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I, I fell in love with the city. I, um, you know, I, I moved here, uh, not in the best part of town. Didn't know where I was going, and then I uh, decided to move, relocate to medical center. Loved it much more. And then when I about seven years ago moved downtown, I fell in love with it all over again, and I've now considered San Antonio my home. Um, we have a, a special guest today. Um, awesome. I guess we can call him a San Antonio icon. Would you yep. disagree uh, with that? No, I'd agree. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, very known in local theater. He is, uh, he is uh, known in the current as doing the uh, political, uh, glitter political, mm -hmm. that's what we call it, right? Uh, segment of the current. And uh, his name is Jade Esteban Estrada. Jade. 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 It's not French. Jade Esteban Estrada. <laughs> so good to meet you. Welcome. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, this is such a nice uh, studio. Yeah, yeah, we built it ourselves. Yeah, um, yeah we did. So, uh, Jade, uh, you, you've, you've traveled the world. You're a one-man act, you're a comedian, you're an actor, right. uh, you're a singer, you do everything. Um, you've traveled the world, you've lived in New York, you've uh, gone to Africa, Australia, Japan, mm -hmm. uh, doing burlesque shows. Um, what brings you back to San Antonio? You're from San Antonio. I'm from San Antonio. I was born uh, at Wilford Hall uh, Medical Center on, uh, at Lackland Air Force Base. And um, it's really interesting. I think it's really important uh, that every artist uh, trains in New York, L.A., and or London, you know, to gather your, you know, your tools, your, you know, the, the, the stuff you need to, to do the work in the first place. But coming back to San Antonio for me was kind of important because as a stand-up comedian, as a solo theater artist, as a writer, my art is telling my story. And my story started here. Um, everything about what I talk about on stage is uh, influenced by uh, the food I ate, the schools I went to when I was growing up. So uh, being here kind of like really uh, nurtures my craft and my writing and, and gives it uh, a special individualism that I think um, I might have lost if I stayed in the big city. Of course, I still have to, to go to New York and L.A. all the time for work. But uh, by being in San Antonio, uh, it's such a world class city anyway at this point. Um, I think it, uh, uh, I'm, I'm inspired every day to write mm. more about my story. So when I travel to different parts of the country and I travel to Europe, I have, I have something authentic to say. And uh, there's a modernization of my art, I think, uh, just every day that I'm here. If you had to choose another place to live besides San Antonio, where would that be? Tucson, Arizona. Really? Yeah. Why is that? The politics? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, not everything about my life is political, but I think uh, I love the climate. I'm yeah. one of those guys who likes Bikram yoga. Uh, like I live for hot, hot weather. I'm with you on that. That dry heat, New Mexico shares that. I weather. love it. And Tucson, I think, is a is a, a sister city culturally to Austin. I mean, it's uh, th there's a lot of uh, there's great food. There's uh, the great people. Very warm feeling you get there also like san antonio i think and also what's cool about san antonio it's like a big city with a small town feel i think everyone will agree with that who uh people who have traveled will come back and say wow we can get everything we need from a big city experience but also people are nice there's a it's a very community driven here people care about their families i talk to my 98 year old grandmother you know almost on the daily i mean we're very close in our family and that's a big part of who I am, and that's why I, I enjoy living here. Thank you for that. So, John, you actually uh, interviewed a few people, uh, a few San Antonio locals, I did, yeah. about their uh, experience in San Antonio and what they like and what they dislike about mm -hmm. San Antonio. Um, Ian, um, can we take a look at that, please? What is up, people? Jean Carlos here with Kale Scope, and I'm with my friend Deliana. Say hey, Deliana. Hey, guys, how y'all doing? Awesome. So we are here in studio and we're talking a little bit about San Antonio. So Deliana, are you from here? I am. I am from here, born and raised. Okay, so puro? 
Puro San Antonio all the way. <laughs> Do you plan, have you always lived here? Yes, my whole life. I've been born and raised, uh, grew up in the south side of town, moved to the far west side uh, by 6 and 4 in Petrenko. Pretty much been here all my life, so. Are you a south side or a west side person? Uh, it depends what west side you're talking about. I'm not like deep in the heart west side downtown, but I more grew up uh, from middle school on uh, towards like Petrenko in 1604, the far west side where there's a lot of growth and movement, all that stuff area. Yeah. All right, so what are the biggest differences between the south side and the west side? The community. The people, definitely. Um, the type of people that you're around, um, there's a lot more family growth and a lot more, um, I, how I'd say middle class is towards like the Petrenko in 1604 as compared to like the south side of town. You got more families, you got more um, grandmothers who've been living at the same house for 25, 40, 50 years. So that's the big difference, honestly. Who has better restaurants, the south side or the west side? Honestly, it depends what you're looking for. If you want something fancy to go out on a date, uh, you're probably gonna be looking towards where I grew up, um, Petrenko in 1604. But if you're looking for, I want a mango nada. I want something more like Mexican, Hispanic. You're gonna go towards the south side and you'll find a whole bunch of like mom and pop restaurants like that around the area. All right, and so where's your favorite place to go get a mango nada? Oh my goodness. Um, <clears throat> There is a place called uh, 210 uh, Raspas. That's in the, um, it's on Pearsall Road, and it's really good. I've been going there since I was about eight years old from what I can remember. And my family loves it. We just love it. And we've been going there for a long time, and I, brought, I bring my kids there too. It's really good. They put everything in there. The stuff that kind of gives you diabetes, you know? Yeah. All right. So, so the diabetes food. <laughs> <laughs> really bad all right. All right. So like, what's the best taqueria over there? Oh my goodness. Um, well, there's a lot of them. I, my parents growing up in the South side, uh, we stayed in one place. So my mom got tired of some of the ones around her. So I've been all around the South side, the West side, uh, for taquerias and everything like that. But honestly, pick one, try out the food there. If you love it, you stick with it. Hi. <laughs> All right, Jen. So we're going to jump into this. All right, I'm not from San Antonio. What about you? Uh, from here. Uh, practically born and raised, yeah. Do you love San Antonio? Uh, I like it. I like it. It's a it's a very big city, but it doesn't feel like it. It's a big city with a small town feel, I feel like. Okay. All right. And is that what you like about it, that kind of feeling? It is because, again, it's walking around San Antonio. It, there's a lot of culture. There's a lot of nice people. It's easy to forget that we're one of the largest cities in, in America and we have two million people living here. So I really like the friendliness of it. Right. Now, what are some things, what are your favorite things about San Antonio? Uh, walking around, I think we have a lot of local artists. Um, I think we're kind of like a, our own version of New York. Uh, except for we have less homeless people. But um, uh, again, walking around downtown or the west side or the south side, I think you get to see a lot of murals, a lot of paintings, a lot of, you know, things like that, where I feel like if you lived in a different city, you wouldn't get a lot of that. Okay, so we're kind of like the New York of Texas. Yeah, yeah, I really all like right, that. All right, all right, cool. Would you say this is the coolest city in Texas? I would, because I feel like Austin's trying to be, but they're a little pretentious. So, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah. You, heard, you hear that, Austin? <laughs> so I feel like uh, San Antonio definitely has the edge. Okay, who has better tacos? Uh, Wait, hold on. Who has better tacos, Austin or San Antonio? I'm going to say San Antonio for the strict fact that, yeah, we have um, more authentic Mexicans here, more authentic Mexican restaurants. Oh, it's more authentic Mexicans. Like, no, no, for real though, we do, right? It's like, when you go over there, it's not puro. It's not, yeah. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> what are some things that you don't like about San Antonio? Um, I feel like, again, uh, part of the things I don't like about it are that it could feel so small. I feel like uh, we're very cut off from the world. I feel like um, sometimes we're left behind behind these large cities like New York or California that are doing huge, great things. I feel like we're kind of left in the dark. Okay, and like what kinds of things do you mean? Um, I feel like uh, 
for example, with music's one thing, when a new album drops, I feel like New York has it first. And then by the time it hits San Antonio, uh, the rest of the world's like, this album's been dropped for like five months. Why are y'all just getting this song or uh, things like that? Um, I think San Ant- I think that's one thing Texas in general is notorious for. Um, and also with like PC culture, things like that. Uh, just a little behind political times and things. So okay, what are some right. of the weird things that you noticed about San Antonio specifically? So some of the weird things that I remember, you know, seeing for the first time when I was when I was when I moved to San Antonio, is that um, for first of all, uh, that there was a lot of uh, commotion on the roads. There, there's a lot of traffic. So, and I've also seen how people can get angry really fast. And I, and almost every day, I could see people trying to cut people off or trying to, you know, um, trying to ram into each other. When that didn't happen, they're getting just screaming, you know, fist fights and stuff like that. I'm just like, what is going on here? Because I'm not used to seeing that type of, um, you know, road rage when I when I was living in other areas of my life. So that was one of the first weird things that I saw here in San Antonio but other than that um, I don't remember seeing much weirdness here I just felt like being in San Antonio is like a really big city for me to be a part of and that's what I enjoy you know most about it so okay all right and what are some things that you instantly loved about here the, the one thing I loved about about San Antonio is it's convenient. So I'm able to get around to places because of the bus system. And because uh, because for right now, I don't have a car, so I can't drive at the moment. So with the bus system, I'm able to get around to anywhere that I want to as long as it's within city limits. So if I wanted to go to, say, an arcade nearby me, I know the exact route that I would need to take to get to that arcade. And it's the same thing with my work site. So if I want to get to my work site, I can also use another route with the bus uh, um, areas to take me there so it, it's actually really nice for me and I, plus anything that I want like uh, like with shopping for video games for food if I want to go out to a restaurant or if I want to do some martial arts or something like that there's always a lot of stuff here in San Antonio and I really dig that that convenience okay, you're the most exciting guy I've interviewed so far so you're doing video games you're, you're a martial artist yes Okay, what kind of martial arts do you practice? So, I, so I'm so i actually a second degree black belt in Taekwondo. Oh, shit, this guy could kick my ass. Well, I could try, but then I'd get into a lot of trouble. Okay. So, but, but yes, I used to practice um, Taekwondo, and I, and, I, and I became a second degree black belt when I was living on the East Coast. So um, so that's the one martial art that I've you know put a lot of time and effort in. So it was a lot of great fun and great memories. Are you challenging me right now? Uh, no, no. Not, I, I you don't want to get in trouble tonight? Not, not tonight, because I've... Cause because I've done so much tonight. I don't want to go out fighting with anybody, you know, because I don't want to get into myself into trouble and don't want to end up in somewhere that I don't want to be, you know. Like a Steven Seagal kind of situation. Yeah, like a Steven Seagal type of thing. See, I wouldn't mind that if it was in a movie, you know. Then then I'll go out and kick all sorts of ass because it would be fun. But but in a real-life situation, not so much unless if I'm the one legitimately, you know, self-defending. You know, either myself or if someone's in trouble and they need help defending, then, then I guess I could jump in and help them out, you know, get them out of that serious situation before something else could happen so okay so we need like a green screen yeah like like a, like a green screen exactly like in the movies so for so for something like that and on the green screen if there are like invisible people I could use that you know use my martial arts to make it look good on the camera and then hopefully it will look good when people would see it I guess so okay, kind of like a video game yeah kind of like a video game you know where video games let you do a lot of things that you want to that you can't do in real life like you know uh, taking taking a part of the World Series or or becoming a ninja and doing all sorts of crazy stuff as a ninja stuff like that so. kind of are ninja Kinda, yeah, kinda, because I do wear the black gi with a black belt, so I could blend into the shadows if I wanted to, and you know, get and get some damage done without anybody else noticing, I guess. So, so it's pretty cool. You strike me as a sword. So, okay, we're gonna play a game here. I'm just gonna ask you best arcade game. Go. Best arcade game? Uh, I'd say Street Fighter Two, off the top of my head. Dance Dance Revolution One. Wow, I, I don't play Dance Dance Revolution, but I do know a group of people that on um, my Facebook that do play Dance Dance Revolution, and they say it's a lot of fun. Your tournaments? Um, I used I used to do um, local tournaments when I was in high school, like 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 small local tournaments, nothing anything major. When I was living in Portugal, and I and I did win a local tournament, which got me some games that I got to uh, pick up and you know own. 
And uh, a long time ago when I was living in Kansas, I actually went to a blockbuster competition in my neighborhood. Now, there were two games at that time that, that they could play. They could either play NBA Jam on the Sega Genesis or Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. What I was most familiar with was Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. So it was basically you, you, and uh, 11 other people had to play three rounds of that game. Whoever got the highest score at the end of those three rounds wins the whole thing, and they would get about 24 uh, free free games to rent for a month, two at a time. So I played Donkey Kong Country all three rounds, and I managed to get the top score in my age group. I was 12 at the time, and everyone else was 11 or 10 years old. And I didn't know that I won until a couple months later when one of my parents called and said, "Hey, you actually won the whole the the competition." I was like, "Really? There, there's just no way!" Because I thought I was going up against skilled players that were actually that good. And it turns out that I won it, and because of that, I got to you know uh, rent two free two games for a month, you know, two at a time. It was perfect it was amazing so you know that being said where's the best place to play video games in san antonio uh well there well i'm not sure about the best place but i know there's a arcade nearby being called diversions and i've and i have seen people actually go in there all the time and play you know nostalgic video games from our past and even sometimes i go in there because i want to really have the nostalgia myself and i do know of a nostalgic shop that's not far from uh the alamo draft house called uh, game over and they and they have like a memorabilia of old video game systems and games and every time i step in there i'm like oh my god this is this is my life right here because this is what I grew up playing from the Atari uh, 5200 all the way to what we have now. So it's it's been an amazing ride as a video gamer so right. far. So you mentioned that you're a fan of Donkey Kong Country. <clears throat> but are you a fan of Country Dan Duntry? Um, no, not that I'm not that I'm very aware of. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Country Dan Duntry? Ah, yeah, Country yeah. Dan Duntry. Yeah, all right. Oh, mm -hmm. That's a big star in Texas. Um, Huge. But yes, uh, that was very interesting. It got some good feedback. It got a lot of good information from mm -hmm. people who are outsiders of San Antonio that want to kind of get to know what San Antonio is like and mm -hmm. why people love it. Um, I find that San Antonio is a bit weird in some ways when it comes to traffic and um, just people's personalities and their kind of, um, you know, everyone's, you know, you're the uh, Cowboys fan that drinks Bud Light and, you know, there's a lot of kind of... Um, Diversity? Diversity is yeah. what we're going for, yes. Sure. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So um, we've got that going on. Um, actually, I remember uh, Jean and Ian actually went to a, a local bar here in San Antonio. And uh, you want to take a look at that? Hey, Ian, roll that clip. South for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anybody say cornbread. Oh, different people say it differently. I, whatever, man. Access. I, I don't know why you bring us to this country ass place. It's got the worst service. Listen, bro, if you want to waste your entire paycheck at the Sulu, the Suhu Saloon for just like five or six drinks, you can go right ahead. But when we come here, it's on me. I can't have that. Well, you know what? Well, well look, there she is. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am? Ma'am. Hi. Yes. Yeah, I uh, much appreciate you leaving objects that don't belong to you in my face. Ma'am, I'm, I'm really sorry, ma'am. Uh, what do you want? <clears throat> okay. Uh, two spur stars? 
Yeah, the, uh, the Suzu Saloon takes cards. The Suzu Saloon takes cards. Yeah, well, they do. Yeah. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, your, uh... You know your vest, it looks a little bit like... Oh, like... oh yeah, I've been, uh, I've been working out. A lot of upper body training. Yeah, actually, total body training, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Um. That, no. 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 I'm saying that it looks like a little bit snug, man. Like, it, like a little tight. No. I did. No. I've just been working out. Like you know. Like I said, bigger shoulders. Uncomfortable. Uh, no. This doesn't look like it. It's, it's, oh. Oh. Okay. All right? What's you the know situation what? There? Yeah. So I, I get it. Yeah. Daryl. He he wasn't at work today. Right. Mm -hmm. So I forgot my vest at home. So since him and I are roughly the same size, I thought I'd borrow his vest. Roughly the same size. Okay. Uh, what? I don't think you're gonna get it, man. Never mind. I, yeah, right. Oh, speaking about Daryl, you remember when you were talking to him yesterday at lunch about like the phobias? Yeah. And uh, were you serious about that word phobia? Yeah, totally. Uh, uh, there's a phobia for everything. You name it, there's a phobia. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, tell me this. What's the phobia for a black person holding office in Texas because that's what a lot of people are afraid of around here. <clears throat> Texan negra congrophobia. What? Texan negra congrophobia. Really? Texan negra congrophobia. Just like that. That's what that associate's degree got you? Uh, no, I'm proud of that. 2008, SAC. Yeah. So, okay, Mr. Yeah. SAC of 2008. Yeah. How come we haven't had a black governor in Texas? You know, we haven't had a black governor, but I will tell you what we have had. Uh, governor Richards, she was the governor before Bush, sometime in the 90s, a woman, and a Democrat. That's pretty good. It is pretty good, but it's kind of a stretch. Yeah. I still don't know why you bring us to this country-ass place, man. Everybody's, I don't know, I'm just a little comfortable. So I like to only fly in the buttermilk, if you will. <laughs> oh, like like One dollar spur stars, baby. That's why. We drink our tea with sugar sweet. Look, just because there's people wearing country articles of clothing doesn't mean that everybody's racist. Look, I mean, there's a Latina right over there. She's wearing a cowgirl hat. That doesn't mean anything. I just saw some second generation Mexican Americans chant out, Build that wall! Yeah! I mean, you know, check this guy. Yeah. We don't take too kindly the people like you around here. Our trucks are wide and shiny. We only serve light beer. Different strokes for different folks. Might as well steer clear Cause we don't take too kindly To people like you around here All right now You know what? I'm gonna say something By all means Ready? Yep. All right. Yo, Country Dan Duntry, who are you talking about when you're talking about people who don't belong here, huh? Boy, I'm trying to do a show here. That ain't very Texas polite of you. Woo! Tell him, Dan! All right. 
Now this next song is about my mama. Yeah, wait, wait, hold on for a second, hold on. I love my mama too, but like who exactly are you talking about? You know, the people that don't belong here. <laughs> Like what people? Immigrants? Brown people? Who? People who are un-American. So what makes you so American? Thank you. I was born right here in San Antonio. Yeah, us, us too. too. Well, my mother gave birth to me inside the Alamo. Inside the Alamo? That, no, that doesn't uh, make any no. sense. My grandmommy gave birth to my mom's mom, and my whole family for generations have been born inside the Alamo for the past 500 years. Yeah! The Alamo, was, the Alamo was built in 1718, so that would make it about, what, 200, 300 years, years old? years old or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... So, what makes you so American? I drive a Ford F-350. Yeah! I have a female wife. Yeah! I watch NASCAR. Woo! Yeah! Oh, yeah I drink Bud Light. Yeah! yeah! Woo! I eat fish and chips and apple pie. Wait, yeah! wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Whoa, fish, whoa. fishing, yes, fish and uh, chips? That, that is definitely, definitely sounds so He means like fried catfish and potato chips. Yeah, I'm a red-blooded American. Woo! Woo! Something about your accent, it, it sounds off. It's, mm -hmm. it's not even a no, Texas no, no, accent. No, no, it's not. I'm as Texan as pure American beef toasted on a Texas bun. Oh my God, you are such a liar. That definitely sounds like yeah. a commercial. Uh -huh. yeah. Country Dan Duntry is my name, and it won't be tarnished by the likes of you. All right, all right. But that doesn't make you a Texan. I am Texan. My daddy fought in the Falklands War. My mama used to bring team biscuits to the Southampton Conservative Association. You're a phony. I am Texan. I like barbecue and getting my neck sunburned and, and Texas tubing and uh, I like, I like uh, driving my big giant truck and driving people off the road. I, I'm Texan. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Texas bone, Texas bread, but not your. Uh, let's go to Luke and Mark, Texas. Get a rope. You know, this place isn't so bad after all. <laughs> so, like, you know, you doing Country Dan Duntry, isn't that a form of cultural appropriation, maybe? Well, no, because um, it's uh, a white guy playing a white guy, yeah. so and it's not an oppressed culture, really. Oh. I mean, would you consider Texas oppressed from England? I mean, Definitely. no. I, well, you know, when you go to the, like, the root definition, at least right now, of cultural appropriation, it's really just when, the, it's the, when there's a um, utilization of one's culture by members of another culture. So on the surface, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just something that happens. The, I think, I think where, where a lot of people get there, um, where there's conflict, let's just put it that way, it's when one, the, the culture that's using another culture is in power in some way. Mm -hmm. So historically, economically, uh, you know, that is where there's be, there becomes an imbalance. And what I think we're starting to see, because this, this term is kind of still in this evolving state, we're starting to hear a lot about cultural appreciation. Ah. Because a lot of people are asking, well, why can't I, you know, dress up like an Irishman on St. Patrick's yeah. Day or do anything like that. So 
um, that is when you kind of like pay pay homage to the source of the culture. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not necessarily taken without, you know, giving credit where credit is due. But I do think there's some variables. Like I can't show cultural ap- appreciation as wearing a big sombrero for Cinco de Mayo because that from out of context can be looked at as cultural appropriation. Is that right? right? And these, these are where the, the lines are really blurred yeah. right now. Um, but like I, I can speak from my own from my own experience as a, a gay Mexican American. Uh, we were talking about this, you know, off camera earlier when I was living in New York. You know, there's this, um, you know, there's a lot of Puerto Ricans yeah. who live there, New Yorkans they call them. And Puerto Ricans by many, uh, at least in gay culture in New York, uh, are seen as like these sexy Latin lover types. And <sighs> as a Mexican American yeah. who pays attention, I knew that I would get more attention from people if I walked around with a Puerto Rican flag t-shirt. And I noticed, like, I just walked down the street, people looked at me and I could tell they were thinking, wow, that guy is a sexy Latin lover. And I was like, thank you, Puerto Rico. <laughs> so that's where I think it, in my opinion, it's, it's a little harmless, you know, because we're talking, it's like almost like a lateral move, mm-hmm, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also the, there's this, um, also these conversations within subcultures of like for in the gay community, I can, I, speaking from my own experience, uh, in the early 90s and into the zeros, there was this big movement among gay men who were appropriating heterosexual male culture. They called it straight acting. So there you have, mm. like, a, like that conversation is almost like a whole other, you know, topic f- for, for, I think, a valuable discussion of what is appropriate, who's in power at the time, because a lot, a lot has changed. Like right now, we, we're talking a lot about transgender issues and concerns and where people are with their feelings about that. But at that time, it was a great example of where we were going and morphing in this conversation. So I think we have not seen the end of cultural appropriation yeah. or cultural appreciation because we can't stop, you know, uh, variety is the spice of life. We can't stop tasting different kinds of foods and wearing yeah. different kinds of costumes. I think what all of this is bringing to the table is awareness. And this, in this digital age, this globalism that's, that's happening, the best thing that can come out of it is awareness so that we're more empathetic. We are more compassionate towards our brothers in other countries and in other situations. So I think it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Every, every discussion that we have, I think, is a, a movement forward to this place where hopefully we are more, uh, more of a compassionate species. Interesting. Um, to test out your theory, Jean, yeah. if me playing a Texan is cultural appropriation for being an English white man playing a Texan white man, <laughs> I went to the Hill Country as Country Dan Duntry, and interviewed somebody there. Ian, roll that clip. Hi, I'm Dan Duntry, and I'm out here in the hill country interviewing people on the topic of cultural appropriation. What's your name, kind sir? My name's Enrique Chavira. And what's your opinion on cultural appropriation? I think it's a very relevant topic. Um, there are some people still who don't know what it means or who don't know what it, how it's relevant to this day. I think up until about two or three weeks ago, there were still some people in my inner circle who were like, why, why do you even care about that? It's, it's just the holidays. You can do whatever you want. Um, don't hold me ex- accountable for what my ancestors did, things like that. Um, and I'm like, okay, but it's still happening. So chill. You know, it's just one of those things where it's still very relevant. It's still something that we have to be very conscious about. And I think people need to know more about it. So what what kind of examples of uh, cultural appropriation would you give us? Um, I think anything from wearing a poncho on Cinco de Mayo, right? Wearing a sombrero on Cinco de Mayo, wearing um, a Pocahontas outfit, like a slutty Pocahontas outfit on Halloween. Um, there's been a few, so I'm from Waco, uh, I remember there was like, um, I was still in college, there was like a little, like, um, like a border wall, like, 
kind of party where there was like some people dressing up as CBP and like other people dressing up as immigrants and other people dressing up like it was just super horrible but like that is the main example like why would you ever do that you know it's just it's those those things are you know people who call um, faux locks dreadlocks that in itself in and of itself is cultural appropriation right because it wasn't until um, those natives were brought from the motherland to here that faux locks started being referred to as dreadlocks that has a negative connotation right and so you think about all those things and it's just you got to get back to the root of it so if you wore a poncho in Cinco de Mayo would people accuse you of being cultural appropriate Asian me yeah not me because I am I was born in Mon Monterrey, Mexico, and so I'm definitely able to do that, right? Because that's my culture. But I think it, it more matters whenever the culture who's oppressing your people and the people in your, in your surroundings, that's when it becomes cultural appropriation, right? So if you have, um, especially in our current political climate with our current administration, where it's mostly the MAGA people, right, going at it against immigrants and this and that if they're the ones putting on the poncho putting on the sombrero without realizing the true hardships that our people are going through that's that's what i would call cultural appropriation so what about a uh english man playing a texan dressing up as a texan for halloween and acting like a texan like english from the uk yeah english from the uk playing a texan from texas I actually wouldn't know how to answer that, to be honest. I, I don't know that I, I'm even in the position to answer that because I'm not a native Texan, nor am I from England. So I wouldn't be able to analyze that at, the, at this moment, right, in my current state, because I've had a few drinks. <laughs> As we all have. But uh, what about Eddie Murphy playing an uh, African and coming to America? Well, I don't know. I think that's that's... I, I think that's within the range, I would say. I'm not sure, again, I'm not African-American, so I wouldn't be able to really say that, whether or not it's allowed or cultural appropriation. I think I just kind of, when it comes to my culture, I'm very certain of what's cultural appropriation. When it's not, I'm, I'm not too sure. So, if the same race plays the same race of that culture, so say a uh, person from Okinawa played a geisha from mainland Japan, that would be fine because it's a Japanese and a Japanese or a black man from America playing a black man from Africa is okay because they're the same race. But uh, it's all about nearly like racial appropriation rather than cultural appropriation because they are different cultures. But what we don't understand like people like us in Texas is that, uh, yeah, I think there's a gray area. I definitely agree. I think it, there's a lot to say about the political uh, relationships between the places that you're speaking of and that you're trying to compare. Um, and it just came to me that whenever you said Englishman and cowboy that you're doing the exact same thing, right? So I guess if people found out that I was doing a character of Dan Dundry and not being me, 10 years from now I could probably get in trouble and lose my job for being cultural inappropriate. Well, what would you call that? Assuming that your people have been oppressed, yes. So it's all about oppression. I don't be so. a prick. And don't <laughs> appropriate someone else's culture that you've oppressed. And that's the bottom line. That's it. Well, thank you very much for your time, Enrique. And this has been another interview in the Hill Country with Dan Duntry. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> Okay. That was very interesting. Yeah. Enrique had some really good uh, Enrique. points. Enrique. 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 Yeah. Enrique had some really good talking Thank points you. there. He was very well versed in the topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yes, it was a uh, great pleasure. Also, um, uh, Ian, uh, over, over in the uh, control room, um, you had a few interviews about San Antonio Living. Let's close out with a few of those. Roll it, Ian. What's going on, Kelscope? It's your boy Ian here, talking to my friend Alyssa here a little bit about um, 
her experience in San Antonio and just, you know, some general thoughts on on a couple things. So real quick, Alyssa, are you a San Antonio native? No. Really? Okay. So where are you from originally? Comfort, Texas. Okay. I, I haven't been in Texas that long. So where would you say Comfort, Texas is for those of us who don't know? Mm. So you don't even know where it is? No. It's- so moving from Comfort uh, to San Antonio, what would you say are some of the obvious and noticeable changes that you experienced people are more friendly yeah and just more family oriented where i come from it's more people know your business and want to talk about it and san antonio is more like oh stay away from that so that's what i like about san antonio okay cool so would you say that when you're in comfort like more people are just all up in your business all the time yes okay so what would you do like when they said, Alyssa, I heard like such and such about you and stuff. Mind your own business. <laughs> Just real straightforward. Okay, I, I can appreciate that. Definitely. Definitely. So would you say that there's something that in comfort that you do miss that you don't get here in San Antonio? Able to see the moon and the stars. Just the country. The country feel. Yeah. Okay. So I know that like there's a lot of country area here in San Antonio that's still considered the country. Have you ever thought about like moving out in that direction? Oh, no. I'm done with the country. I just like to visit and come back home. So what do you like to do here in town when, like, your spare time? I like to go to the zoo a lot with my kids. Visit Texas, um, go eat at different places. So that's what I like to do, mostly. Or work. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's, your, what's your favorite place to go eat? Olive Garden. <laughs> Non-spawn. Okay, Olive Garden. Um, so... Speaking about that, so is there under th- any other things here in San Antonio that you notice that you can do, like in comfort? You said you can look up at the star, you can see, or look at the sky, and you can see the stars and the moon. Uh, is there something that you can experience here in San Antonio that you can not even get close to in comfort? I think the food. The food is way better here in San Antonio than where I'm from. And it's a lot, the prices are not too bad, so it's more affordable here. Really, it's more expensive in comfort? Yes. Like four dollars for a bean and cheese taco. You pay four dollars for a bean and cheese taco? Yep. That bean and cheese better have gold on it. I mean that better that bean and cheese better sing to me. Like it is it that good in comfort to where it's supposed to be four dollars? Well you think about it, there's so small there's only one restaurant in comfort. So come to San Antonio, there's like a ton, so you just gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so there's a monopoly of bean and cheese in comfort. So you're saying if I started a business over there, I'd be okay? Yeah, you would probably be out of the whole restaurants. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So are you a San Antonio native? I'm, I'm not. I'm originally from Austin. Oh, okay. So how long have you been here in San Antonio? Uh, about 16 years. Okay, so 16 years. So wouldn't you say that you're pretty much a native by now? I guess. I don't know. I still have to claim Austin. <laughs> okay. Understood, understood. So uh, initially, what was the reason for the move from Austin to San Antonio other than the tacos? Other than the tacos, yeah. Just needed a change of pace, so decided to come to San Antonio with some family and planted my roots here. Awesome. So with that transition coming in from Austin into San Antonio, what are the initial major differences that you've noticed? Uh, The people. People are a lot more friendly in San Antonio. They make you feel like family. Everybody helps one another. It's definitely more of a family atmosphere. Really? Okay, that's interesting. I I myself, I'm not from San Antonio um, as well, and I've noticed that as well. So now, going on the other side, being in San Antonio and then, you know, of course, coming from Austin, what's something that you either miss or you go, hmm, that's that's a little different? Um, Well, Austin is weird. So uh, I guess this is the new, this is normal life. Um, I'm used to, I don't know if you know who Leslie is, but he ran many years for mayor. He was a very, he was a character. He was a staple of Austin. Um, so the climate here is a little bit different. Um, it's more political in Austin. I grew up in the wanting to be in politics. So I was uh, always at the, at the state capitol watching legislature and fun stuff. That's different. Um, but I guess that's kind of what I do miss. But there's museums and and there's still culture here in San Antonio. Oh, yeah. San Antonio definitely is the uh, hub of cultura, as I've learned my Spanish word of the day. 
Well done, Ian. You extracted some very valuable information from those San Antonians. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, um, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and uh, let's thank uh, Jade Esteban Estrada for thank being you. our guest today. Thank you. Absolute pleasure and congratulations. Oh, and thank you very much. And Jean Carlos, our yeah. co-host, and Ian Grant, he is our correspondent and operator. Yeah. Um, let's also give it up for Rossi. She's our director. <laughs> thank you very much. And this has been another episode, actually the first episode of Kaleskope. We will have plenty more. Until next time. Show mama's town brown. I like Texas brisket with coleslaw on the side. I'm Texas bound, Texas bread, but not like Texas toast brown. I like barbacoa with big bread on the side. I'm Texas bound, Texas bread, but not show mama's town We don't take too kindly to people like you around here. Our trucks are wide and shiny. We only serve light beer. Different strokes for different folks. You might as well steer clear. Cause we don't take too kindly to people like you around here folks like us like folks like us ain't nothing wrong with that our trucks our boots our rifles our big old cowboy hats We drink our tea with sugar sweet And we like our brisket fat So if you can hang in with us You may as well hit the tracks Like you around here